So Arnold's one week away. How, uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, nervous, excited, nervous again. It's, it, it's the biggest stage that you can ever, ever kind of get on. And obviously having two companies to kind of get to that point, especially after the last year, um, it is quite a monumental moment. But I'm confident at the same time. Um, but obviously we fought, well, obviously you, Aaron, Jay, uh, I think after the first few conversations I've had with you all that you've wanted to do this type of video for quite a while. Um, so we might as well kind of take it from, take it from the top or from the bottom, should you say really? It's like, do you know what, I'm, I'm thinking I'm a nervous and I'm, I'm not that nervous. It's, it's, it's personal stuff to put out and I've always basically fronted up with business. I've always gone right. So here's the business, here's clients and I've kind of not really done much towards me or you, you put celebrating the success all the time type of stuff rather than anything like this but I think at this point now we are definitely at a top point and I don't mind jumping back uh, and kind of showing what's actually got to this point you could say. Um, Alright, so if I were going to start I'd say from a young age probably, and I'm not joking, 13, 14 years old, was the first time, I can't remember saying this, first time that I actually saw a psychologist, or it was actually a sports psychologist at that time. Uh, but about 13, 14 years old, I used to experience like severe anxiety. Um, and it weren't, type, it weren't really the type of anxiety where you just kind of worry and stuff like that. It, it, at a very young age, at 14 years old, like it used to cripple me. Um, and it was more profound when it comes to like playing quite an all right level rugby league at that age. And I used to get that nervous before games. And I basically, at 14 years old, I had like a, I put so much pressure on myself. And I mean, like I had to perform like anything I did, I, I fought so, so deeply about it. But then basically over time, the, this level of anxiety, it, it developed as, as my mind was developing what I've learned in the years and developed into more like attacking myself. Um, and I've, I've said this to people before and obviously it was my mates and stuff now, but the best way I could describe is that at 14, 15 years old, I knew that I was different and I knew that I fought differently um, and not in a positive way. Well, in theory it's positive, but there's also negative implications of it. So like, for example, if you had 10 bottles of water there and there's no difference between who I am now and 12 years ago, like when I see, ten, if I see 10, if someone looked at that and went, right, that's 10 objects, I'll see 100. If I'm in a heightened state, I'll see 1,000. Uh, I'll, I'll look at scenarios and emotions and it, es it escalates and, and how my mind works, it's like it looks at so many different dynamics that it possibly could be. So from, from a working perspective, yeah, it's absolutely mint because I can get loads done and I can look at stuff in different ways. But when it comes to processing like negative emotions or positive emotions or anything what kind of happens at their majors, that's where it obviously kind of become a little bit of a problem. And then moving into 15 years old, um, I was still trying to figure out who I was as a person. Um, I was still trying to, it was almost like every single day I was almost confused thinking, why, why is my head doing this? Why am I turning the turning circles into squares and fucking, do you know what I mean? Like bottles of water into elephants. Like my head's just bouncing around all over the place all the time. So you've got this 15 year old kid who, who just didn't even know how to process myself as a person. Um, and at 15, uh, my auntie committed suicide through depression, uh, which was obviously a shock to say the least. Uh, in a short concession, after that, I lost two grandparents. Um, in the space of a, a two or three year period, like quite a lot went down. Um, and I were at this age where I still didn't, I couldn't process myself and all this stuff had like kind of come out, come around. And, and at this, at the, I know now what it was, what I did, but at like around 15, 16 years old, I, I couldn't deal with my head anymore. And I went into a fight or flight response, I don't know if I've studied it, a fight or flight response, and I just totally, totally shut my emotions off. Um, so for, for a kid who was, I think the word for it is highly, highly functioning, I think that's the best way, I think that's what the, the, you're supposed to say. 
So for a kid who's highly functioning, who's kind of experienced the, the, these little different scenarios in life, like to then go, right, shut it down, because it, at that age, being conscious of my own emotions was actually more painful than actually trying to register them. Um, just because of the dynamic of kind of how I processed information and emotions. Um, moving on, at 16, 16, late, late 16, uh, I was volunteering in Uganda. Um, I know, random. But I volunteered in Uganda and it basically totally, totally changed my perspective on life. Uh, it totally changed my perspective on who I was as a person and it, and it almost kind of gave me meaning at that point, like being, being around people who had such so little who needed that much help. And, and it was almost like it was, a, it was an epiphany, it's called an epiphany, isn't it? Um, it was like a calling to me. Um, and I came back from that trip and I just knew two things that I was like, the first thing I was like, I didn't have a clue what were happening inside my head and I didn't have a clue what were happening to me. But I knew that it weren't gonna beat me. I knew that whatever I was gonna do from that point, I was gonna win. And I knew that in that process, I was just gonna help as many people as I could. Um, and that basically created, I got my, it sounds stupid, I got my superpowers back. I, I joke say, it called superpowers. So I got my superpowers back when I come back from Africa um, and I started going into, into it's right thinking, right, what am I doing with my life? Straight away come back and I was just, I went from this kid who was a bit like so shut down to bang, got this light and then all these thoughts come back but then I would, I'd channeled all these processes and this emotion and this energy into, into myself and I was like, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something with myself here, I'm not sitting around. Uh, and I came back and I did an A level, a B tech, I did a year A level year one and year two in a BTEC in the space of 12 months to get into university. Uh, I literally sat in a library from like six o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night or whatever it was, or however long you're allowed to stay at school. Um, I quit playing rugby league, which was a huge part of my life, but this is kind of where I was at that point. I was like, there was nothing, there was nothing that I was not willing to do to just achieve. Um, and, and at that point, it became a, it became a drug. I, I was I was obsessed with winning. Um, I was just like as soon as I got this, whenever it got to a qualification, whenever it come to anything, an award. Um, I, I'm not joking. Anything. It, it, this is developed like around going into university, and I was never the smartest kid. Like I was never the smartest kid in any way, shape, or form. But it, when, I were, when, I, when I love something like nutrition, uh, I was obsessed with it. I got 89% or something in nutrition. I got poor scores in my other ones, come out with a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, but I were, when, I, when I were obsessed with something, I, it, once it was in my head, all my emotion like kind of channeled into that. Um, and that's when I kind of transitioned into thinking, right, how can I use this, what I'm doing now, um, to actually go back to where I knew what kind of gave me life at that point, and that was obviously helping people. So I came out of university starting, put every, every, sing, every single penny I had, um, and I'm not joking, if you saw my, my uni mates, Rob and Ben, like I would finally your uni, I was doing a dissertation and starting a business at the same time, <coughs> with literally every penny that I possibly had. Uh, that failed miserably, but obviously I learnt a lot from it. But what kind of happened at that point is when I came out of university, uh, who, how, how obsessed I was with kind of working and winning and these achievements, it, 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 like I said, it was a drug, but nothing ever hit that spot. Uh, and it's probably a little bit what I'm like now still. There was never a point where I come out of it and I go, right, bang, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, right, I've achieved it, bang, 30 seconds later, what's next? There was no, it was that, uh, my, that was my closest friends call it the, Closest friends call it the treadmill effect. Um, like they say, that you've not got to worry about me when I'm sprinting and I'm dying and I, and I can't breathe and I'm gasping for water. It's when the treadmill stops, that's when you've got to be worried. Uh, but you can't live your life like that. And over a five year period, I learned that the hard way, um, putting everything I had into more qualifications, into business, into clients, into 
like everything I did, it was just constant search of that win and trying to search for that small gratification, like kind of in myself. And that's where it got bad, really, to be fair. Because I think what happened is I'd, over a six year period from 15, I'd ignored, ignored kind of what was happening inside my head. I'd shut down. So obviously, again, fight or flight, you shut down. It's only going to come and bite you in the arse later on. And boy, did it bite me in the arse. Uh, I was, I used to work flat out. This is probably only until the last few years. I used to work flat out, go, 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 go. Months, whatever, whatever amount of time, whatever I need to do, I'd, I'd work. But then I'd come in, come into my house, like my first rented house or even a, a, any house I own at that point. It's probably only until I've got this house that I've chilled out a little bit. But I used to come into the house and, and this, the, the anxiety was still there, but the attacking myself was still there. Um, and I would walk in and the root, it, it's so hard to explain. When you ignore something like that for such a long time, and you, I used to walk into the house and I'd go from being the most popular guy in the gym where I'd speak to everyone, I'd have all these clients, I'd, I'd be doing a stupid amount of money for, for, for my age at that point. But I'd come in and I had nothing. And I mean, like, I'd come in and the room would depressurise, the ceiling would come. I felt like I'd be just going from, and it was a moment that door closed, and, and that was for about five, for about five years at least. Like silence was the only thing that I was scared of. I wasn't scared of business risks, financial risks. I wasn't scared of putting myself out there. I wasn't kind of scared of anything like that. It, it was, it was quiet. It was, could I actually sit? in a fucking, sorry, in a quiet room with, an, with like nothing to work on. And that's what happened every single time. I'd get that qualification, I'd get to that tear, or I'd do that thing in it with that silence and I'd come in. I used to have to, I used to walk the dogs and I'd have to basically listen to a podcast every single time and I was studying what's going on. I've got a library of hundreds of podcasts, audio books, God knows what. Like, and it was, <laughs> this, this, to, the, to the extreme of, I was like, I, like, I, I still made that promise to myself. I said like, no matter what, I don't care what was happening inside my head. I said, I had them three things. I was gonna help people, I was doing that. I was gonna be the best person that I could be, but I also weren't gonna let it beat me. And I kind of got to a point where I said, all right, I've got to do something drastic. Now, what am I gonna do? Right, I'm gonna climb Kilimanjaro. What? I, 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 it wouldn't like, just turn around and went one day I went, right, I'm not in a great environment with work, but I was still doing a stupid amount of money for, for what I was doing, like, but I weren't happy, but it was more the fact that I was still coming back and I still couldn't accept myself and I still couldn't, true, I couldn't even be happy. I, I was not happy. Uh, and that's, that's, the, that's probably the only thing that upsets me is the, the feeling of not actually thinking, I've done well, I've achieved something. There was just nothing, nothingness. And I thought, right, you know what, I'm climbing Kilimanjaro. So, because if I go Kilimanjaro, I've got eight, nine days where I've got no phone, no technology. Like it was never man versus mountain, it was man versus my mind. Like, could I climb up that hill, like pretty big hill, come back down and not go insane? That's the extremes of kind of the, where I was, where I was willing to take this. Um, and I came back and I'd, it, I created this, I created this persona and this, this Ben Oaks of this character who was like, everyone saw me, he was going, oh yeah, he's achieved this, achieved that, achieved that, bang. Nah, it weren't like that. Family, friends, they all know what it was real like, kind of behind closed doors. Um, and I came back from Kilimanjaro and I, fl and I flipped my life up down, moved to kind of Rotherham and obviously it was the best risk ever because it's created, it's, it's, I went from 10 to 1,000 at that point. but. In doing that, I took steps back financially. Um, the risks that I had to take, I have told everyone I was sleeping on a mattress. I had to get rid of my dogs. I ran in out of hospital with some health complications. I had, I had to go to court because I had driving speeding fine. I got, it was just a bad year, 2018. Um, but it was the thought of, I, I cannot go back on myself. And it's a weird thing, and I'm talking, I can't walk the dogs on trails. So for example, you get a trail to walk from like one town to the next town. I can't do that, because you've got to walk back down the same path. That's how, this is how this works, and we had this, this high function. 
to the point where I used to walk the dogs uh, when I used to live at Westfield, I used to walk the dogs up a path and I would walk across about 100 metres of muddy, horrible moss just to walk on a different path to walk back, even though I get mucky, horrible trainers, just because I thought I can't, I can't walk that, back down that same path. It's just ingrained in me, I can't do that. So then obviously I built it all back up from Rotherham kind of at that point and, and then I started like, and it's just, it's kind of turned into what it is now. And it, people say to me all the time, it's like, people talk about a reason why. Um, I genuinely don't have a reason why. My, my, my reason why is to like to take on each day. Like, I, there's no reason to, to, for anything for that. For like, my, the underlying motivation came, came from that trip to Africa. Like, for example, when I look at the businesses and now like, if you, if you give someone one good quality meal, that one good quality meal, I'm talking nice food, you can change someone's mood for a full afternoon. You can change someone's mood for a day. When it comes to online coaching, you do one good solid check-in where you care about that client, you show, you, you help them improve and, and just elevate them as a person. You can change their week, you can change their relationship at home, you can change them as a parent, as a father or whatever. You get someone onto a level two, level three mentorship, you can directly take someone from one path in life to another path in life where they're more fulfilled and more happy. So that's always, it's always a massive, massive motivation for, for me. Um, but something I kind of learned to, did, I think it was Mark Coles. Mark Coles was probably like kind of the final little tapping the, tapping, nailing the coffin or what kind of what you call it is, what was my reason why I was doing these things? Was it because I was literally trying to help people or were I just trying to save myself? And that really hit home because there's been mo monumental times over the years where I have given so much away before kind of rewarding myself and that was because I didn't didn't value myself enough to take I, the thing businesses and stuff like that there's you can yeah it earns money and it does this and it does that but I know 100% that I could be in a much more elevated position in life based on the structure that I've got if I'd not given so much away and if I had actually valued myself like he taught me in that in that consultancy and again that's one of the the biggest biggest things that he did for me was kind of to go right actually make stuff about you now right you've you've done enough for other people like you you it's time that you treat yourself like a business and you stop trying to pay other people's wages rather than yourself or just giving stuff away like kind of all the time um and there's been monumental people over the years i've had like dave nisho fantastic um fantastic bloke and that's just kind of led me to where i am now where for me to do this video now, to talk about that is, yeah, like I said, I'm a bit nervous, but if you can't talk about stuff now, when can you? Like, we're going to Arnold's Festival, it's massive. Do you know what I mean? Everything's in a good position. I've got a great girlfriend, dogs. I've got a swanky kitchen where you press a button and something pops up over there. Like, there's a, there's a drawer in here what's like a roundabout. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm at that point where, I don't mind people kind of knowing that, don't knowing who I am, and that's the main thing for this video. Like, this is not a, this is not my reason why. This is just who I am and why I do what I do.